Go, 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 go. go. Not <laughs> awful. <laughs> All right, so climate change and human-related activities in Nigeria have been responsible for flooding, droughts, de decreased um, air quality, and loss of habitats. Now, last year's flooding was caused by heavy uh, rainfall and climate change, as well as the release of water from the Lagdo Dam in neighboring Cameroon. Now, this flooding, which affected Nigeria, Niger, Chad, and the surrounding regions began in the early summer of 2022 and ended in October. So while Nigeria typically experiences seasonal flooding, this flood was the worst in the country since the 2012 flood. Now the rainy season is upon us again, and we have started to see um, the re precautions of flooding. So today we're asking how can we stop um, flooding in Nigeria? Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. So I don't even know where to start this conversation from because honestly speaking, first of all, I am I am really tired of Nigeria. Like so. Nigeria has so much, but it, it, it's like for every time I see what Nigeria can be and I see what it is, it just gives me mental, mental, mental health issues. And let me both put it like that. You know, because you know why I say this? I remember as a young undergraduate, I think it was in 2012. So my grandfather lived in Benin, right? So... We, we made it a point of duty when, whilst he was alive. Every year, we would go to Benin City. Um, every December, we would go spend Christmas with my grandfather. So when, we, when I was going to go to the university, because we had done school all our lives in the north, he insisted that never. We can't school it because I was supposed to go to ABU Zaria. He said, never. We have to find a school in our, like, down south. At least let's have a feel of our own people because we don't know anything. We were northerners. We just only come on holiday, Christmas, and we go back. So that was how he insisted we come to Benin. Every time it was rainy season, literally I put my heart in my mouth. First of all, I'm very irritated when I saw those millipede, centipede, and all those things. So first of all, I already have a phobia when it comes to rain in Nigeria. Then in Benin in particular, you will see houses like the, the rain has gotten to the roof or maybe the window level of whatever. This thing has been on for years, for decades. Do you understand? So I don't understand... What, what exactly is the role of government? Do you understand? Why can you not provide adequate infrastructure if you do not know how to handle the situation? There are experts. Our kind of flood in Nigeria is not the type that, is, that it, it cannot be controlled. Do you understand? Because if you have the right infrastructure, like the right planning and all of those things, it can be channeled to a, a, a what's it called, a, a whatever, a, a river or something. You can channel that water. So every time I see this flood situation, it thing just, I, I cringe because I don't even know how to explain it. And when we complain as citizens, you expect us not to say anything. We're attacking, we're not attacking the government. Nigerians are not asking for too much. Give us light. Give us good roads, network. Jonathan, just give us proper infrastructure and light. And we will blossom. We don't, need, we don't need anything extra. And that's why people are even clamoring 
that this palliative that they're talking about as regards fuel scarcity, can we channel that palliative to infrastructure so that we solve all the problem once and for all? Don't give us any handouts. So re really, I, I actually thought I was going to be calm today, but honestly speaking, watching the video again is, is really upsetting because these things are, they are actually avoidable. But let me hear your thoughts, Jennifer. Honestly, the same way you're tired is the same way I'm tired. Um, I remember when my friend used to live in um, Agungi, and that place gets really flooded, right? So once it rains, you really cannot leave your house. And if you do, it means that you would have to walk. Because if you use your car, you would most likely stop um, in the middle of the road because the water was really this high. And um, I remember we were coming back. We went out when the rain started. So by the time we were coming back, we were using the boat. By the time the boat driver saw the water, he said he couldn't go anymore. I guess well, we weren't even close to the house. So we both, we had to beg the guy and begged and said we'll add extra money. He said the extra money we want to give him is not going to fix his car if he goes into the water. The water. So I think the only reason why he was even able to enter that water that day was because he saw another car. That was moving. not as high as his. Yeah, so he saw another car moving and he just followed, followed the, path. the same path that the guy took. And while we were doing that, we found out that there were some other cars in front that had actually stopped Got and stuck. they were moving. So we were actually very lucky that day because we didn't want to walk inside that water. Agongi is dirty. Do you know what will enter your body? Um, what's, the, what's the name of that um, thing that goes with water? Is it titanus? No, no, it's not even, there's something that, because it has yeah. happened to my sister yes. before. I've, I've I had, had to cut the leg to, to bring out the, mm -hmm. the stuff. I've had something like that. I remember as a it's child, very dangerous. I entered the flooded water, and then the next day, I woke up with like sores and rashes all over my leg, and my grandma then had to use some for We have traditional herbs, medicine, yes, traditional to take medicine it out. To, to, to actually treat it. So since that time, I've been very scared ha, about, about flooding. And when we, by the time we got to our house, luckily for my friend, she stays on the second floor and not ground floor. The people that were living on the ground floor, I, I felt so bad for them because their house was basically just swimming. Their beds were swimming on the water. It was a very, it was a very sad thing. It's very sad thing to see. So when I started looking for, when we both started looking for another apartment to move into, we were actually thinking about, okay, we need a place that doesn't flood as much, right? So I mean, even moving to a place that wasn't flooding as Agungi um, currently floods is way more expensive. But we had to take that risk. Like you know what? So we'd rather spend that money and move to this place. Than for us to move back. Hmm. But imagine people who actually cannot can even afford, afford it. What would right? you say? People who cannot afford. I remember, I think it was last year. Yeah, was it last year or two years ago? I was in Lagos at the time when it, it rained for like two days or it was even a day or something. And the cars at Lagos Island, my yeah. friend's car, car, yes, car, 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 my friend's yes. car was actually one of the cars. They, I had to call her. Are you okay? She said she's not okay. I'm like, oh my God. She said that it was so flooded that when the water actually came down and she finally took her car because they then they were advising people don't even drive the car like if you want to fix that car tell your it mechanic to, to come, come there, there to fix it and for her she made a mistake of actually starting the car mm -hmm. and trying to drive she was able to drive that car back home but she spent a lot of money because it knocked and then that was it. So that was like extra, extra, extra unplanned expenses. expenses. Unplanned expenses. It's like, I mean, it was the same last year that we were talking about flooding in other states where people couldn't move, people couldn't go anywhere, and their, their farmlands were flooded, mm. they couldn't harvest their crops, they couldn't do anything. So flooding leads to a lot of things, and we've always been complaining. I mean, I've been hearing about bad drainage systems since I was a child. And up until now, it's still the same issue. You know it's like nobody's listening. Nobody wants to do anything. Um, open our phone lines, right? Because I, I don't even think we need to go on this break. Mm -hmm. Please, if you want to join the conversation, call us on zero seven zero two five zero zero seven seven four nine. There's no need to go on it because this is a serious matter, and that's the number to call. Remember, turn off all the volume of your television. Tell us what the flooding situation is like in your area, if you if you want to share. And tell us if you think there's a solution that the government needs to hear, what you feel the solution would be, right? And we're still discussing flooding. Let, let me come to you, Uti, then I'll come back to you, uh, Mary. Uti, what are your thoughts on this when you saw the video? 
Well, it's nothing new for startups. We've been dealing, like like Jennifer said, we've been dealing with flooding issues um, from time immemorial. It's not a new thing. The only difference I can say is that it continues to deteriorate. It has done that year on year, which is why we find ourselves where we are now. And I, I largely agree with everything that has been said so far, but I, I think that beyond the government as well, we all have... Um, we all have our responsibilities in the matter. We have responsibilities because um, we've seen so many stories of houses being built, you know, beyond their permissions. We've seen land being appropriated that is, you know, in the pathway of where water should flow. But all this one, so Uti, the, Uti, Uti, so the, Uti, hold, yes. hold your thoughts because all what you just said now is linked to government. But let me take Paul, I think, for my better. Then I'll come back to you. Please don't forget your thoughts. Go ahead, Paul. You're live. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Um, the issue of flood in Nigeria has to do with uh, bad planning and execution of uh, building policies in each of the states of the country. For example, there is some planning in every local government. Mm -hmm. And their work is to ensure that you do not build on natural waterways. Thank you. Like in Lagos here, the area where I'm living, you discover that the natural waterways have been built upon. Mm. And government gives certificate of uh, occupancy to the owners of these buildings. Mm -hmm. They inspect it before it is being built. So that is the cause once you block that natural waterway. Once there is rainfall, everywhere will be flooded. And then when they are constructing roads, they don't construct uh, gutters, really? villages. If they do, they do just a very shallow one that a little thing will just cover it up. So I think it's the failure of government to execute the policies that will enhance that when there is rainfall, it will not result to this flooding and destruction of uh, Thank you, properties. Uti, let me come back to you. So, so yeah, like I said, the, the, I mean, Paul has touched on some of the things I was going to say, but the fact is, so I hear you in blaming government. I hear you that there's town planning. I hear all of these aspects, and there's definitely failures there. I'm not saying there aren't failures there. But the fact is, I'll take a place like Agungi that Jennifer mentioned. These are places where you know, you have a lot of reclaimed land, you have, you know, a lot of water on either side. I mean, the island is literally a strip of land in between two bodies of water, let me put it that way. You know, water in front, water at the back, right? And if anywhere shouldn't have drainage problems, it is the island. But the failure of town planning, as they say, people buy land, people build, and nobody's looking at the impact. Is the government, is the government that approves right? the OT? Yes, I'm not saying that's not the government. Listen to what I'm saying. The government is approving. I'm going somewhere, right? So there's the impact. Now, the first problem is all these new areas that are being built. So, for example, the island, right? Land is literally being developed in isolation. So you literally, the Agungi problem was caused by the development of a certain part of that area where waterways were blocked and... You know, waters are basically just stagnating on the road. Now, that is an existing problem, right? But let's talk about why the problem continues to proliferate. You come into an area and you are going to build. There is a level of greed that we must apportion to not just the government, the but to the people. Mm -hmm. Because you come in as a developer, you want to build, you could choose to do what is right. It may cost you a bit more, it may cost you more, right? To then ensure that you put, put in proper drainage. I live in an estate that drainage was factored in to the body of water where the, the water was going to drain out to. So when the surrounding area floods, my estate does not flood. Yes, there's groundwater because, again, like we said, reclaimed land. Water will, will 
come out from groundwater will come up but as soon as the rain fall um dry it stops falling the water very quickly settles now that was done even in the face of government what 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 have you that was a developer that did that so when we all say that every blame lays at the feet of government i'll give another example hmm. another road very close to that same agungi area the first developer who built there did the road in front of their property with paving stones right interlocking blocks as we call it next to the property was empty land right and then another property now that in fact that property came first let me even let me give the, the right trajectory the first property was on the left hand side of the road they built and they did the road let's say from the junction up to where their property ended then there was empty land the person who then built second built on the far side of the empty land right so there was now empty land in the middle right both of them on either side did um paving stones the one that built second built his paving stones almost close to where the first developer stopped but there was still empty land in the middle two things happened a big name brand petrol station came into that empty space and built a petrol station another developer built two houses next to that petrol station mm. now in the course of those buildings those two sets of people that were building their trucks completely wrecked but Uti. The, hold on now i'm going mm. somewhere <laughs> completely wrecked the paving stones on that road so this was a perfectly smooth road where the first two developers are taking into consideration the work that they did completely wrecked the paving stones in fact created almost like a deep gully in front of the petrol station now the developer that built the two houses in between the first build and the petrol station did what piled up the sand right raised it so high that the difference between the road he met and the road that he connected to right it was almost like building a maybe one and a half foot speed bump but Uti, you're still buttressing my point so let me now, say, no, your point is but i hear you i'm i'm trying to get you to understand that it is not enough to keep saying government government no that's what i'm saying to, that. to you you see the problem i have right everybody has a bit of madness in them it is yes, something that controls that madness so if the government what? is not ready to stick to the laws they have these laws why are they not why are they not enforcing so the law my point i hear you Uwa, and then you, you still come back to the government we've already addressed that the government is not doing what they're supposed to do and i'm yes, saying that God. two wrongs don't make it right I so if the, the if, if the people that are supposed to do right by you which is the developer that you're, you're referring to now they refuse to do anything who is supposed to put them in check do you understand so that's what i'm saying now you are talking about who is supposed to put them in check but we've already established the failure of the system to put them in check what i'm simply saying is that in the midst of this there are people, as I gave this, started off giving the, ex the um, explanation of my estate. Even in the midst of the failure of one, you can yeah, choose. Right. But what it is now is that the same selfishness that is affecting all of us in Nigeria is what is still coming to play in this flooding issue. If you go to neighborhoods, people have turned their drainages into dustbins. Yeah. They throw all their rubbish in there. Is it the government that is throwing rubbish in your dustbin in front of your house? Then when your gutter, where the water is not even going anywhere, the small space where the, the water is supposed to go is now full of rubbish. Please, is it the government that is doing you or you, you are doing yourself? Uh, that, hey, That's okay. the point I'm trying to make. Let me come back. Wait, let me hear uh, this. Please, the number to call is 70 Let's hear your thoughts. Uh, Mary, let me come to you. I, I hear you, Uti. I, I, I know I know. go talk again. Continue. Mm. What? <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't know where to start from. Um, I think it's very sad that we keep flogging the same issue year after year. And I totally understand what um, Uti is saying in terms of we need to take responsibility um, as opposed to waiting for the government and the government every time. So I've experienced flooding 
firsthand or my mom has experienced it and um, within the past two or three months the landlord has raised the foundation of the house so I mean it looks funny now because my mom's on the ground floor and it feels like you are descending to enter your, to house. Enter your house but now that there's rain you know just put the cement and everything so the water flows out and it's not you know coming in so i think that's an individual taking responsibility of you know what where the situation that we find ourselves in because we have to help ourselves if okay. we keep waiting for government and government wait and i'm government. coming back to you don't worry or laugh for me lori or laugh for me lori or this matter i don't know ah. You're alive. Go ahead, please. I said turn off the volume of your whatever you're watching. Hello? Hello? Go ahead. How are you? Please, okay. we need to cut Good you. Good evening. Good evening. Hello? Please, you need to turn off the volume of whatever device it is that you're watching us from so we don't get a feedback. It's difficult to hear. Okay. I don't know how to say this. Let me keep quiet. Jennifer. <laughs> Let me keep quiet. So, Sorry, um, Jennifer. I, I, before I, I you get, just add to it, who are? Where? Uh, yes, Uti. Who are? Yes, ma'am. The reason why I think you have to say it that way is so that we all know that, see, if we don't behave ourselves, we're all doing ourselves. It's not enough to keep saying somebody else, somebody else, somebody else, somebody else. Do you get what I mean? That's what I'm because saying, if you, Uti. If you leave us, you know, say, everybody get madness inside their body. Everybody is selfish, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. let me tell you something. Since you say you want to be mad, I will tell you that I'm mad. As a government, I will check you. I will check with you. That's my point. For the government, we, we don't. We don't. We don't. We no. There was a time in this country. Can you go in the UK now and you just drink this and throw it on the road like that? Or you, well, your you dog? You, wait hearing. now. There are fines. There are fines, right? Yeah, you see somebody good. drinking in a in a car and you throw your pet bottle out. If somebody sent him a bill, or there's a fine. You will not try it next time when there are consequences for your action. That's my point. So I, I, I get where I get what Uwa is saying, right? I mean, you've seen sometimes where you've seen buildings where the fence is almost to the road, right? It's like you're you're taking up space where you're not supposed to take up space, mm. and then you see that the government has actually put a mark sign there, like X, which means that you need to take this down and move it back, mm. right? And then there are some places where you've also seen where people are are, are trading on the road right so you've reduced the, the space. space and the government has to come to enforce the laws and yes i get that even as citizens we actually have to do our part because i remember when they were talking about flooding i think it was um this is 2023 so i think it was 2021 where they showed in surulere there was serious flood and everything we saw were just waste. dirt Thank waste you. and, and it, it was full let me take Ola. I think he's back from Ilori, I believe. You're live. Go ahead. Hello, Ola. Hello, good evening. Please go ahead quickly. You're live. How are you? We're good. Go ahead. I'm stamp stamp. Hello. Go ahead. I'm, can... uh, I'm watching your program now. This is my first time to turn it to you. Thank you for calling. Thank Hello. you. Go ahead, Hello. please. Uh, what I'm trying to say about the floor you are talking about. Are you hearing me? We are here. We are here. We can hear you. Okay. God bless you. Uh, when you are talking about flood in Nigeria, you are always blaming government. Today, when I was driving, coming from my office to my house, if you see what people are doing, parking refuge on the road, mm. it's not only Lagos alone. If you see what people are doing, when government are doing something, People are trying to spoil everything. We are the one who is going to face all this problem by ourselves. Thank you. We are the ones supposed to discipline so ourselves. Thank you, Ola. Sorry, unfortunately, we, we, we were running out of time. I want to say this. When rain falls, you see people carry their bin, right? They do it. They used to do it. They'll carry their bin and they'll go and throw it in the so that the rain water. They believe the rain water will okay, take the yes. bin away. So let me tell you something. I don't have any problem. I 100% agree with you, Uti. We are the problem. We are the biggest problem when it comes to this flooding issue. But, but I'm saying, if we start to pay, right? If yeah. we start to pay for our actions, everybody will check themselves. True you don't need anybody to tell you yeah. that if I catch you, 
do what is not right. So, do you understand? Like, there was a time you could not try certain things in this country. Yeah. That you drink water and you throw it, you throw the, the pet bottle out, out the window. Loma from Abia State. Let me hear your call quickly in one minute. Good evening, Tachita. Good evening, Loma. Yeah. See, I buy your idea, Uwa. I buy your idea, Uwa. See, don't say, what man? We even in Akwanaba, before, when you drop anything on the ground, you pay a fine of 3,000. Thank you. But these days, governments are no longer doing it because they are so much interested in oil. So the right thing to do, we allow people to dump refuse here and there. We know that we, we I, 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 citizens, are one of the uh, uh, factors behind what is happening in the The government are not doing their work. Let them stand on their feet and start doing the right thing. People will do the right thing. Okay, thank you so much. Quickly, do, do we have messages? Uh, no. Okay, go ahead. Um, most flood is caused by blockage of drainage with products like plastic bottles, polythene bags, and ETC. Yeah, thank you so much. But ladies, Uti, let me give you one minute. Make you not be say I cut you off. <laughs> Uti, are you there? You yes, know? I'm here. Oh, yeah, quickly. Uh, and I'm not going to say anything else. I think that... Um, as I always say, the value of our platform is, even if government no go here, now people now they watch the show. Abio. Help us help ourselves. Mm. Let us all be more responsible. Two wrongs don't make it right. I know you can say that hey, it doesn't make sense or whatever, but the fact is, I always, I always stand on the position that whilst I may not be able to control what anybody else can do, I can control what I can do. Absolutely. So in that sense, I stand on the fact that I make better decisions for myself and I own up to my own shortcomings when I um, make mistakes. Absolutely. So that even if somebody else doesn't, it, it, you know, do I can only speak right. for myself. And I think that if we, yes, if we all did that, mm -hmm. I mean, the nation would be better. Forget the small. I, the, the, the politicians and the leaders are the 1% of the world. Okay. One percent. Like there's this 200 million Nigerians. How many people are in that house of Senate, house of rep and all joined together? How many? <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think we can do better. Jennifer, quickly. So I, I, I completely agree with, uh, agree with Uti, and I think as citizens, we need to start doing better. Mm. And I mean, the other day we talked about accountability. We need to start holding ourselves accountable and start doing the right thing, right? And stop waiting for government to do some certain things. But I also urge the government to start putting fines so that when people are going against these things, then we need to fine you for it. You have to pay somehow. Thank put you. People put in check. Absolutely. Mm. Auntie? <laughs> um, I think we can do better for ourselves by looking, uh, moving towards um, sustainability. So, mm -hmm. and the plastic has caused a lot of damage, both climate change, climate change damage, mm -hmm. and you know drainage and everything. So, I think we should start looking for, you know, alternative? yes, an alternative, which Absolutely. is um, absolutely paper and um, the biodegra biodegradable. Oh. You know, substances. Well, no, we never reach there for Nigeria. <laughs> no, we we can we can start to implement it so that you my know. own BC <laughs> government. Let me beg you, people. Look at me very well, eyeball to eyeball. Just give me the power. Tell me that I have become your police on the road. We can all take responsible uh, responsibility, like empower citizens to be able to um, um report other citizens. You go see, say change will happen because it's simple, right? If I know that somebody is watching me, if I do something, I will be fine. Definitely. A lot of things. Because this flooding that happens in Nigeria, I don't know about any other part Every of the world. Year. It is human problem. It is us that is causing the, the flooding ourselves. So we can only do that when we start to take responsibility. Like Uti rightly said, I agree with you. But I also believe that we need a tougher hand for us to be able to like, you know, do the right thing. On that note, thank you so much, ladies. I'm apologizing in case I shouted too much. <laughs> <laughs> the matter is just got okay, in my blood. It's okay, <laughs> Thank you, Uti. <laughs> thank you, Jennifer. And thank you, Mary. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. We cannot prevent hurricane or earthquakes. Floods or volcano 
volcanic eruption, but we can ensure that both people and communities are better prepared and more resilient. This is for climates where they have problems. We, we can control it. Just act responsible as a citizen. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. So bring another great conversation to your screen.